All right, all right. Let's do this one last time. By now, everyone's heard of Lethal Company. I mean, it's super popular, so I don't want to bore you. I just want to make money. I've spent the last few days trying to min-max the hell out of the game in order to get a world record quota. But quick disclaimer, I think min-maxing the game kind of ruins the fun. But I'm a bit of an anal nerd, so I enjoy this kind of stuff. All right, so how do we make some fat fucking stacks? There's only really one hard rule, never wipe. Day one starts with a profit quota of 130. Wait, wait, Easy peasy. Come. Wrong. You've got the wrong perspective. These early days are super important. You need to get a head start on a backlog of scrap. Only turn in as much scrap as you need for the quota. Save the rest. There are eight moons split into three tiers, with tier one being the easiest. Experimentation doesn't have much loot, but it's pretty small, so it's easy to get every piece of loot for a solid 600 every time. Assurance and Vow are similar, but the distance to the complex is longer, and the fire doors are a little harder to get to. Decent alternatives if you don't want to deal with the weather, but I'll get to that. The tier two moons are Offense and March. I used to always run Offense, especially if you buy an extension ladder to get to the fire exit. Now though, I always go to March, since there are three fire doors, the most in the game. So it's really easy to cover a lot of ground very quickly if one person goes to each entrance. You can link up later, since usually two or three of the fire exit are very close to each other. Tier 2 moons have much more loot, but also get worse enemies. The layout in the building is also much more complex, and easier to get lost in. If you want to make fat stacks though, your first quota should be at Tier 2 moons. Again, I'll explain more later. The Tier 3 moons are the most dangerous, but also the most profitable. Damn, this is heaps. The structure inside is very deep and complex, but every structure follows a pattern. The main entrance has up to three ways to go. Up to two are always dead ends, and one leads to a maze. The maze is pitch black on Tier 3 moons, and very easy to get lost in. But often the most loot is in these deep reaches of the dungeon. We have Rend, which I recommend avoiding, Dine, which has a great fire escape, and Titan, my personal favourite. The tier 3 moons cost money to go to, quite a lot, with Titan being the most expensive at 700. Choosing which moon to go to depends on preference, but March, Dine and Titan are objectively the best moons. March for its fire exits and free entry, Dine for its fire exit and mansion dungeon if you prefer that, and Titan for its close proximity to the ship and ability to drop loot straight outside the ship with an extension ladder. Now, I need to explain weather. Some people think that weather increases loot, but my testing shows this not to be the case. Rainy means that there are sinkholes outside. <gasps> it's very easy to stumble into one if you're not on the ball. You just need to back up the way you came to get out. They appear as dark patches on the ground, but they're easily missed. Stormy means lightning. Lightning will strike metal items, which makes it a pain to get your loot home. Listen out for the sound. It starts very quietly and is easily missed, but if you're focused, you get about five seconds warning to drop your items and run. Foggy makes the outside foggy, really foggy. It's insanely easy to get lost in if you don't know your way. And finally, Eclipsed. Eclipsed makes enemies spawn when you arrive. Hey, fuck you, bitch. It used to be an immediate nope for us, but since we've got experience in dealing with monsters, it's worth the risk. Though, this does introduce our second rule. On Eclipse, someone always stays on the ship. You should now understand why you want to go to a tier 3 moon as soon as possible. Oh, hello. Shit, 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 shit. You might be wondering why we don't have a monitor guy. Well, that's because they get distracted by War Thunder, the sponsor of today's video. Warning, this game is highly addictive. I have 700 hours in this game. I think that should speak for itself. But if you need more convincing, just look at the plethora of features. Over 2,000 vehicles on land, air, and sea with fully simulated armor, weaponry, physics, and damage models, painstakingly true to real life. A comprehensive progression for multiple nations spanning over 100 years, stunning 4K graphics with an insane level of detail and customization, including camouflage, historical markings, 3D decorations like bushes and equipment. Free to play right now on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and it's cross-platform. 
My favorite way to play the game is combined arms. Use a ground vehicle until you have enough spawn points for an aircraft. Then bomb the living daylight out of anyone who opposes you. Whether you're new or haven't played in a while, use my link to claim a large bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles, premium account time, exclusive decorations for your vehicles, and much, much more. All right, where were we? If you're hunting a world record like we are, that means Titan or Dine on day five, or for quota two. I think it's better to go to Titan on day five with no equipment than to buy equipment and go on day nine. You make so much more money at Titan than on any tier two boat. You lose 20% of your money for each death when you don't recover the body. Not such an issue when you have a teleporter, but until then, you might as well just spend your money. He's gonna see we're all dead now. Thank you. Hello? Don't steal my shit, you asshole. He took my ball. <laughs> I have made a mistake. So, yep, yeah, that's what I was worried about. It's... Should be fine. There we go. Oh. Dead. Chaos is dead. Yep, it's just me. So you made your first quota. Wow we. Now would be a good time to talk about the monsters and how to deal with them. Tier 1 and 2 moons have a variety of monsters to contend with. They all have attributes that allow you to deal with them. Loot bugs are passive until you provoke them. They have an area where they hoard items. If you walk past them, they usually back up into this area and stand over it, protecting it. If you get too close or take an item, they go into a frenzy. Sometimes loot books are so pathetically harmless when they're chasing you, and you can just literally walk away. Other times, they just seem to hit you and instantly cause you to limp, and they just decimate you. If they're not provoked, as long as you don't walk directly into them, they'll stay passive. Even if they fly into you, you should be fine. Did you see it? On the left. They take three shovel hits to kill, and it's worth just killing them as soon as you see them if you have a shovel on hand. Slimes are harmless, unless you're an idiot. Ow. They're mostly just an inconvenience, as their large size often blocks passages, and the slow movement means it takes forever to get them out of the way. You can run through them without dying, but I don't recommend it. Just jump on a railing, or just jump over them. Uh, these things, I always forget their name. They're harmless. If provoked, they spray gas, which kind of acts like steam, makes it hard to see. That's it. If you hit them or walk into them, they will hit you. They can be mistaken for thumpers, but they have a telltale purple balloon on their tail. Snare fleas are the first real threat. It's easy to get caught out by them if you're running alone or trying to get in and out quick. Once you hear a vent open, keep an eye on the ceiling and you'll be fine. If you have a guy on the computers, they can also see them for you. But by the time they tell you, you've probably already run under it. They can be killed in two to three hits by a shovel. You can be saved if someone else hits them off of your head, if you get teleported, or if you can find an exit and go through the door, which kills them. You can also hit one off your own head if you can find your shovel. Now we have the real monsters. Starting with the Bracken, or Flower Guy, or just Eyes. He's the monster with the glowing eyes that creeps up and watches you from a distance. You need to look at him and immediately look away. You'll hear a sound of him retreating, and if you don't hear that, you need to look at him again. It takes a bit of trial and error to fully understand what I mean, but basically sometimes he doesn't register that you're looking at him, so he doesn't retreat. It can be easy to look at him twice when he's blocking the way you want to go. Don't. You have to be patient with this guy. Let him retreat, and he'll disappear and come from another angle. If you look at him while he's retreating, he'll come for you. There's a real danger when you're in a group. Even just two people can make dealing with this guy exponentially more difficult. If you don't coordinate who looks at him, you can quickly find yourself dead. You can also find yourself in a situation where one looks at him, and he's forced to retreat towards another player who looks at him. And then he either retreats back and forth until someone dies, or he just says fuck it. Oh fuck! And kills one of you at random. He can be killed, but only if he bugs out and stops moving. I don't think a stun gun is worth it. He's too fast and can still grab you while you're zapping him. And flash grenades are too slow and hard to hit with. Again, you can jump on a railing to avoid him. Yep. Next is the coil head. Oh, Basically SCP-173 or Weeping Angels. They rarely kill you directly, but by making you walk backwards into another threat. If you're with someone, it's easy to deal with them, but it wastes so much time and manpower. This is where a radio guy comes in useful, because they can guide you to a dead end with a blast door and lock him in. However, every time I've tried this, you waste so much time just finding one of these blast doors, let alone guiding the guys there. By the time you've managed it, more enemies will have spawned anyway. I think it's better to just start wrapping up. Have someone watch him while the rest start getting the loot out. 
Oopsies. Or have everybody leave at the same time so he wanders to another part of the complex, or just go in the fire exit. Be warned though, he can very quickly rush up from behind. Come on. Or if you have a pipe or other obstacle in front of you, sometimes it can be enough for him to not be seen and rush up to you. He's killed me once while I've been looking at him this way. Also, he can't be killed. <laughs> now we have the thumper. Probably the most frustrating enemy. Noted for the thumping sound it makes, it's actually death. There's a number of ways to deal with it. If you run a shovel, which I highly recommend, you can kill him in about five to six hits. However, don't do it face to face. Find a railing you can retreat to, aggro him, run back, jump on the railing, and kill him this way. Yeah. Fuck you, bitch. Get fucked, bitch. Die. When you've aggroed him like this, he will not de-aggro unless you run away. It's really frustrating. He runs back and forth. It's a nightmare. If you don't have a shovel, do the same thing. Jump on the railing, and you need to wait until he goes away, then run. You need to lose line of sight, and then some. If you think you've lost him, keep running. The amount of times I've run around a few corners only to be followed, ugh, it's really annoying. We also have the bunker spider. Uh, is Jen alive? She's still alive, she's still alive. Oh, now she's not. Alright, uh, she's still alive? Uh, she's moving. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, <laughs> she's moving. definitely moving. Hello there. I don't find this one much of a threat personally. It sees and hears you, but it's an ambush predator, so it doesn't hunt you. If you enter its lair, it'll freeze and wait. This can catch you out sometimes, since it can be hard to notice if it's on the wall or ceiling. If you walk into its webbing or too close, it'll attack. But you can often crouch under or jump over the webs. Again, a railing will render it harmless. Oh no! <gasps> and it dies in free shuttle hits. All these enemies will appear in all of the moons at some point. It's completely random. We also have the outdoor enemies, which are slightly dependent on which moon you're on, but it seems that now any enemy can spawn on any moon. First, we have the eyeless dog, probably your first outdoor monster. It's blind and hunts with hearing. It naturally tends towards the ship, probably because of the noise it makes, and it will often enter the ship if someone is inside. You can dodge out of the way when they lunge, or simply crouch past. I like to call out to distract them. Hey, dumbass! This can save a teammate, even if it's about to pounce on them. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, dumbass! Then you simply need to move to a different location to where you made the sound. It must be noted that some items make noise, for instance, the robot or the chattering teeth. Also, we're pretty sure that dropping items can make sound, especially the balls. They still catch you out quite often, and they can be killed if you stun them, but I wouldn't bother. Also, after testing, it's apparent that they prioritize the most recent player noise. So if you make a noise with something else, they're likely to still go for a player if they make a noise around the same time. Oh no! Radar boosters can be used to lure them away, but they don't have much range. However, the drop pod does. Buy the cheapest item from the store, and you'll get a solid 30 seconds of safe time once it lands. Oh, what the f Next, we have the forest giants. These are probably your most frustrating enemy. They can see you from miles away, and once they come for you, they move faster than you, but walk slower than you can sprint. They'll see you even if you're hiding. They're complete bullshit. When they eat you, all the items on your person are deleted. I've seen someone crouch past them before. Apparently they can hear you. Honestly, your only defense is to save up your sprint and hope that you're close enough to either the ship or an entrance or somewhere you can get out of reach. You can be saved by a flash grenade. If someone else stuns the giant. Yeah, I saved you. Oh, he's grabbed me, 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 he's grabbed me. He's grabbed me. God damn it. Oh, he saved me last fucking second. All by being teleported. Huh? 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 Finally, we have the baboon hawks. I don't really understand them. Apparently, they steal items and will attack you when they're in a big group. But I've had four to five around me, and they didn't attack me. They just threatened me. They can be killed, but I wouldn't bother. I did mention the worm earlier. When you hear a rumble, sprint in a straight line. If he ever gets directly below you, he will insta kill you and delete all your items. You can also get an instructor to evade him, but I'm pretty sure rocks don't work. Finally, we have the tier 3 enemies. The Jester took a few iterations to completely figure out. He wanders around the dungeon until he finds someone. He will then follow them. Once he's following, he will randomly activate by starting to wind up. I thought this phase was random, but it seems to be exact. After about 60 seconds of winding, he'll pop 
and hunt down every player in the dungeon and insta-kill them. No. No. <laughs> a stun grenade will pause his wind-up or his aggressive form for about five seconds. The stun gun will slow his movement, but he will still kill you. He can't be killed. You can avoid him by jumping on a railing and be saved by a teleport. But don't do this without a teleporter, as he will stay active until everybody leaves the dungeon for about 10 to 20 seconds. Best to give him a little bit more time to wander away from the door, which he no doubt followed you to. And the last monster we have is the ghost girl. Oh, I'm fucking haunted. She will haunt someone on the team. If you see her, that means you're haunted. There is a mechanic which makes you more likely to be haunted. If you look back and forth more than anyone else and carry more loot than anyone, you have a higher chance of being haunted. There's no real way to deal with her. She has a stalking phase where she appears and disappears at random. Then she will slowly start to skip towards you. If she touches you, you die instantly. You can actually avoid her by sitting on a railing, though if you try and hit her, you'll die. You may be able to kite her indefinitely. I haven't really had the chance to test this, but there's no reason you wouldn't be able to. The kicker though, is that once she kills someone, she haunts another person, and another, until everyone is dead. Oh, and in the mansion, she can climb the railings, just so you know. She can't be killed or stunned. Okay, can we get to the run now? Thank you. So you're at time- Oh, I should probably mention what the items do. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'll make it quick. You only have four slots, so you want to carry as little as possible. You also want to spend all your money, since if anybody dies, you lose money to fines anyway. Late game, you'll have thousands lying around. Just spend it and get a stockpile of items. Walkie talkies are good for keeping in contact and way nothing. They're great for avoiding getting wiped. Flashlights are useless. Sometimes I like to buy like 50 of them and use them as little markers to help me navigate the tier 3 moves. I don't think it really helps, but it makes me feel better. Shovels are top tier. I usually always run with one, even though it weighs a ton. Lockpickers are probably worth keeping outside when you've got a lot of money, in case you find a fire door with a locked door. Pro flashlights are great if you're not min-maxing, and for quality of life, but me and the homies go in lightless these days. Stun grenades are great to keep on the ship for dealing with forest giants. If someone gets picked up by the forest giant, you can save them by throwing a flashbang. I don't really think they're worth bringing into the complex though, and they don't work on dogs. Boombox is the best item in the game. TZB in hunt doesn't really do much. It makes your stamina last longer, but everyone kind of just uses it as a joke. Oh, My turn. Good, <laughs> the stone gun isn't worth taking in. It's too expensive to lose and not helpful enough to risk. You can use it to flex and try to kill the Bracken, that's about it. Every other killable enemy can be done by using a railing. After more testing, the stun gun isn't even really useful for the forest giants. It can save you, and two people can stun lock a giant for about 30 seconds before someone runs out of battery. But the same can be achieved with one person and two stun grenades. The stun grenades actually stop them for a few seconds. With the stun gun, if you stop stunning the giant, he'll just pick you up. One strategy I would use, however, is to sit on top of the ship, right in the middle of this circle where he can't get you. Then you can use the stun gun to let people get onto the ship. Jetpack is useless, but okay, scratch that. Someone glitched in a bunch of jetpacks, so I was able to just fly around the map, and honestly, it was kinda useful. Once you get the hang of it, you can fly between the ship and the entrance really easily. I might explore it some more and see if there's some real utility to it. The extension ladder is low-key MVP. Nerd. You can use it on offense to get to the fire exit, and you can even use it on Titan to make loot transfer 10 times faster. Oh no, we're gonna lose so much money! Uh, the radar booster. It says hello if you ping it. Theoretically, it's good if you have a radio man and leave it at the entrance to know if it's safe to enter. As for ship upgrades, the teleporter is good, but honestly overrated. You can sometimes save people, but it's way too slow. And you still lose money even if you retrieve the body anyway. Reverse teleporter is awful. On tier 3 moons, it sends you so far into the complex that it takes you till the end of the day to get out. You can teleport all four people for the memes though. I'm, I'm stuck, man! Oh, I see you! I see you! <laughs> Help! The loud horn is an underrated upgrade. If you close the ship doors, using the horn lures dogs to the front, giving people time and space to get in. Okay, so now we're at Titan. The reason I love Titan so much is because the entrance is just up a flight of stairs. Even with the fog, you walk in a straight line out of the ship, slightly to the right, and then you're right there. You can drop loot from the top, or better, with two extension ladders, you can safely drop the loot right outside the ship. It's amazing. Originally, I would always try and get out by 1pm, since that's when a lot of the monsters start to spawn. But, if you've got a good team, and everyone's super aware of what's going on, for instance, as soon as people start dying, someone stays at the ship so you don't wipe. Rule 1, do not wipe. 
You can go very late, but if you get a Jester or a Ghost Girl, your run is going to be over very quickly. Sometimes you do get a lucky run, where you only have enemies that are easy to deal with. Alright, let's get this bread. Bracken, Bracken and Flea, Bracken and Flea. Oh shit. Get him, get him. Hi. Oh, haunted, Bracken, <laughs> and the Jester. Well, yeah, I think I was just too was close to it. Nice, easy start. Let's go. Oh, he's dead! Oh, I just gotta get him. Three coil heads. We, there's no way we're getting it. <laughs> Alright, we're eclipsed. Hey dog, hey dog, stupid! Oh, you can He's going for it. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Take me! Take me! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god, how does he do it? He'll go back for it. I know what he's like. He'll go back for it. No, he's going back for it. I told you he would. I told you. Oh. Dude. If we just had four Glens on our team, it'd be so good. How do you make your way through the maze? Forget everything else in your life. You got that memory for something important. You might be wondering how this could be a world record attempt with such bad luck. And, well, it gets worse before it gets better. This was our first official attempt, and we learnt a lot. But for now, our next quota is probably our worst. Fuck's sake. We should have reset. God, if we'd have reset, we'd have scored so much higher. But I think I knew, and it took the pressure off. The first quotas are easy. We can meet our quota in a day. Oh, okay, that's not fine. So, the backlog grows. They normally have- oh, shit. Yeah, so this, uh... Oh, Excuse me. This is gonna be fun. Oh, oh no! God damn. Are you- By day 17, we need to sell as much scrap as it costs to go to Titan. There is an argument to be made that, up until this point, we'd get more scrap as backlog by going to tier 2 moons, since the extra scrap we sell to afford Titan might be more than the extra scrap we get from going there. But from here on, it's no longer in question. Titan is king. However, 9 hours of Titan does get tedious, so we went to dine. This early, we don't even appreciate the effectiveness of the fire exit, and use main. It's not a significant blunder, since I like how much ground the main entrance lets you cover. I'm haunted. I'm gonna ferry.
way you fucking. Season. As always, Glenn is insatiable. Oh, I got some stuff to do. Oh, not good. We learned that flooded dine is a no-go, but we didn't know. Uh, so we we need to go this way. I think I don't know. Are you kidding? Help, Glenn! The fire exit isn't affected by flooding. We barely recover with a good run on the last day before quota. Not that we wouldn't meet it, but the backlog is hurting for our poor performance. Oh, I got a cash register. I made the money. Money. Oh my god, you caught up to me because this thing's so heavy. <laughs> I get left. Dead. Oh no, it's coming up on chaos on the right. Just leave without me. Go, 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 go. Alright, yeah. so you get the gist now. It's time to grind this out. Oh, fucking... If anyone can tell Glenn that the way I went is a lot of loot. Because I can see it. Oh, there's fucking loads of loot. Right, I've got my radio on me, I can't respond, just tell me if there's something coming. Just yeah, running a straight line, didn't I? What you are a bunch of hogwash, is Might be dead. 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 Might be Yeah, someone, someone start ferrying this. We gotta secure it. I think this is the most we've ever gone. Okay, it's 3 p.m. Watch out for dogs. You are witnessing the most loot ever seen on Titan. Of ah, course, it's fucking cursed. We need speed. I need more. This is insane. This is th easily the best run we've ever had. No! Oh, are you kidding? No! Yeah. 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 He can't see. He just so much loss in the foot still. Oh, that's so That's so cute. We didn't get greedy though. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Close enough. Ah. Uh... So he made the right so call, much. but like that's that's yeah. we would have set a new oh, record there, so I think. Much. Oh! <laughs> you can have that in uh, no, they're all pretty professional. It's hard not to feel defeated after that. There's not really anything we could have done differently. And to rub salt in the wound, Chaos had to leave, meaning we had to rehost. Problem is, there's an item limit, and we end up losing about ten items, despite chucking away all the cheap tools and scrap.
three, four, five, six. We've lost like 50%. On the bright side, our quota was now so high, we could spend money willy-nilly. Now we're in the home stretch. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off. We have a quota to meet. That's bullshit. Grab those in this. That's bad. Wait, type in mix. You got. See you, loser. Teleport me, these pipes are not working. Guys? Yeah, teleport me. Can't see anything. Oh, there's so much loot, what the f Please don't kill me. Teleport me, teleport me, teleport me. Please teleport me, what's he doing? Teleport me, teleport me, teleport me. Thanks for the teleport, asshole. Okay, yeah, give me a TP, I'm not making out. Give me TP, 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 teleport, please. Yeah, but I went over.
2,000. 3,000. 4,000. 4,400. This is our best result yet. We try and reach the next quota, but we just didn't have enough backlog. Nine hours in the making, only to miss out by 200. We would have set the record on our first attempt. Well, it's hardly anything to be ashamed of. We've shown we have what it takes. Attempt two is gonna be a belter. Thanks again to War Thunder, the most detailed PvP vehicle combat game ever made. Use my link now to claim premium vehicles, account, and exclusive decorations so you can dominate the battleground absolutely free in style. As always, thanks to the wonderful patrons and channel members. Shushgirl, Joy Alvinkt, Katsune Teku, Outsau, Kimchi, Violet, Vitko, Semper Noimod, Aura, The Marriage, Low Daniel 123, Jabol, Hiaje, Chromechan but JJF, Foxfired, Harkness, Chaos, Dominic and Gracia, Squatlock, Scott C, Haphazard, Will Cthulhu, made sure to spell it right this time, Delicate Soul, GamerGuy69, Mason Brewer, and Jamie Williams. He's still going. <laughs> 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 I made it pretty far, I guess.